Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to Sunday. Wow, it's Sunday already. Um, oh dear. My long phone, phone cable's actually gone inside. Oh, with my good phone charger, even. Get this wired up. Good morning. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Number one. Welcome, number one. So I uh, get my phone set up and we will get going. Ah, uh, and I forgot to turn the light on in the room. That's better. So we're gonna do uh, client stuff. We're gonna get some client bits going. Bear Duda cheered with four bits. Damn, thank you. <laughs> Good morning. one other thing I wanted to check on. No Espen unless your brain is a <laughs> good morning. Ideos quadruple six seven Perduda, how are you? Hope everybody's having a good weekend. So a little quick cleanup. Uh, 
that's good dough. Oh, and there's a uh, Capitan. Okay. And there I go. Closing too many terminals. I closed Kitty. Now the size is off. <laughs> Let's resize everything. Alright, Godot's not running like that. Uh oh. What kind of game am I making? I'm making uh, kind of an exploration adventure building game. Oh good, Captain's still running. There we go. Yep. All right. Let's run the server. I, I think we had planned it to be kind of two and a half D at the beginning, but I'm leaning more three D at this point. It's gonna kind of be lightweight three D stuff, but I I think it'll be all right. I'm not gonna go, you know, like triple A level like three D detail, but. I think there's a, a way to kind of balance 3D with kind of low, low poly 3D. If you can get the texturing right. Do I think Godot's up to the task? Yes, I do. I do. All right, now here it says that the server is actually running. Do I have Godot running? I don't. Now I think that screen went black, didn't it? Nope, it caught up. We're going to try to get some login working as we have our unit test working. So we're going to get a little further going. So we're on Bootstrap. Let's just make sure these things are set up right. Yep. Good. Oh, look at that. Login actually worked. <laughs> oh, we got some stuff back. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. This is awesome. All right, in celebration of that, we should do our joke of the day. Let's 
saying, no, 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 this one's not good enough for this. Um, What happened to the guy who sued over his missing luggage? He lost his case. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, he lost his case. I think we've done that one before. It's a common one. All right. Now, back to this. What are we going to do here? It looks like we're actually getting pieces back. The client received this, but didn't do anything with it. Now we should actually move the game server. Yeah, it's shutting down. Good. Let's move it over here. Got to close some of these. Oh, suspended jobs. There we go. One, two, and five. And good, we have that. Good morning. Good morning, Kent. How's it going? I'm going to get into, uh, let's see. This is the client code. I think we want login. Yes, yes, we use Rust on the client side with GD Native. So that we do the login. Async away to login. I think this is actually doing the login and then it redirects us to the next next scene, which is actors. I would like it better if this wasn't hardwired. Not gonna hold up on that. Alright, so what Actors, there it is. All right, now this is GD Native. Well, Rust with the GD Native code base. Um, we end up extending from Native class, so we just have some element here. It extends from Node. Actors. This is the this is the Rust struct that gets attached to the scene element. So if we look over here. Scene. You can see little scrolls to the right of these elements here on the right. Each one of those is uh, some little class in Rust. So this one on scene change. This one here, login.gdn. If we go to actors, see probably the same sort of thing where we have you know scene change on key. So if they hit escape, they go back to the other scene. Is this one set up correctly? Yeah, they go back to login here. This point, actors. Yep. So this is the script we should be working on. As you can see, it's GDNS here. It's nothing. Um, but if we look down here, we'll see that it's set up to, uh, to use the GDN lib. Went too far. And it's using the script called the actors, the class named actors. 
which is what maps here. Everything needs a new. And we are using its ready. So in this case, what are we doing? We clear the actor list. We tell it to grab focus. So create a packet and then we send it We give this this uh, net object our request, and then we get a response back. Maybe we don't know if it does or not. Then we get our get actor response, and we don't do anything with it. Log debug actor list. Actually, we might have seen that. Oh, that was in uh, log debug actor list, which would have been here in Terminal 5. Interesting, I'm not seeing it. We do see the packet here. It looks like this request is hitting, but we're not actually getting something past there. Like these two bits aren't happening. debug into that. So the, the way that this works is if we do a request here with uh, net, we wrap it up in what, what I'm calling a, a callback. Right? We have some sort of ID that we associate with a payload that gets sent to the server. The server does its calculations and sends back the result along with that number. When the client gets the number, it says, hey, is this the one that I'm actually looking for? Is it a callback? Is it the callback I care about? The one I want? And if so, we will return it. This little bit here is actually defined after the return it's only ever used in this function, so it's a nice little pocket to toss it into. Now, where is that actually going wrong? I'm, I'm looking through this. It looks like it's all going to be fine. Let's toss in some little bit of logging so we can verify So we get the actors, request set up, send that. Wonder why that didn't work. Oh, probably because I started Godot without log level stuff set. <laughs> All right, I'm going to restart Godot. It did not close. I'm fine with that. Give that a save and close.
Okay. Now we have a little bit more going on here. Let's try to let's try to log in again. Log in. Oh, good. Yeah, we do see actor list now. All right. Now that we're all set up. We know this hit. Now to set the actors. The other thing that we were doing is uh, actually taking some of the GD script that we had from before and uh, porting it to Rust. So occasionally we will be pulling that up side by side. As an example, this is what the equivalent GD script actually looks like. So on ready, we end up clearing it. Escape goes back. Get actors. In the uh, GD script, I actually had a system for, excuse me, for uh, kind of uh, dispatching information, or dispatching events, saying, hey, I want this, and then being able to listen for it globally. Um, in this case, we were using yield on the Godot side of stuff. Now we'll end up using uh, spawn tasks. All right. So what did we do after we got the elements? Oh, we just loop over the actors and add them to the list, add their name to the list. Select the first one. Okay. So now that we have the actor list, let's add them. Get actors here. Okay, no, no, no. We want this actor list. That's right, can't do that. Now, in a case like this, we could either just look it up from kind of uh, in a global way, which is probably what we're going to do in this case. Because so we're using a multi threaded executor. And I ended up liking that better than the uh, the single threaded one, or just because it ends up um, being a little bit more aggressive in in the way that it's managing. Um, um, I guess send and sync in the Rust side of things. Now, we're spawning here. Ah, here. Oh, that's right. And then I called this like that. In this case, I was actually trying to uh, see what it was like, or what it could be like once 0.9.1 for uh native comes out. All right. So that would just be a ref for a control. So we end up claiming it beforehand. Why? 
we get so we can get the wrath. And why does that work? Because this ref here, the smart pointer, changes depending on the mem memory management method, the underlying type, and the access status. Okay. All right. Let's do the same thing here. Now in this case, we're actually calling ready. Claiming there. Well, there's no note. Ah, because we're using the um, borrowed type already. Alright, we actually want the TRF shared control. Well, shared node in this case. Actors. Is that going to fail now? Nope. Okay. Now at this point, because we have the claimed version of this, basically we have the um, a reference to this node. We can't use the same functions on it anymore. So now we have map, node, and get. Basically everything off of ref. Or we have a couple little utility tools for this. Let's refresh my mind on this. I don't remember what these were. Map owner. Okay. Map get node. Well, that, that seems pretty straightforward. So it's going to want a path and then the callback function. We will need to give it some sort of type here. I'm going to call that list. All right. I think we have to give it the, uh, the actual item list here because of the way that get that map get node works. So it's going to enforce that certain things are true here and that this result bubbles backwards through. And that this get typed node have a type of T. All right. So that's the owner's type. That'll be node in our case. Good. 
And this barred you. There, it should be able to figure that out. Well, not really. We have to give it a type for that. It's an item list. Let's do a move here. A little move closure. And we'll add everything for that there. Oh, it's actors, not actors. Why is that wrapped up like that? Now at this point we're going to pull that in, so import this. That trait needs to be available, and what was the other error? Mismatch types. I would expect a result at the end of this. There we go. And this is tuples. Really? Type factor list? Hmm. It is. Just deconstruct that here and then use the name portion of it. I don't remember what. Oh, it's an array of a tuple? What? All right, that shouldn't be boxed up. Ooh, that might cause other errors. No? Hmm. There it is. Okay. Oh, but now it's not a list, of course. Dereferencing. Okay. So why is this the case? Why is it that we have a box here? It's got some sort of array inside of it with tuples inside. We should be able to iterate over the, the inner list.
iterator. I see, and this is implementing, so box impulse iterator for things that impl iterator. Got it. Um, so why is it not working? Seems like it should. This is, this is the same thing. Interesting. So what's the difference then? Actress is a type actor list. Which is just a box of that type. We can call it intuiter on it because well it's iterable. But why does the for loop not pick that up? Odd. our list type cancel file system actors here is what an item list All right, so it's really just an add item. I was calling add and not add item. Where's Kitty? There you are. Add item. Oh, three, but found one. I think we also need to keep this list around. So we have the the ID associated with these names and the indexes. I keep going back to the browser. I don't know why. Right. I'm supposed to be going back to Oh the docs. The docs. So a string for the name, okay. Icon texture, null and selectable, true or false. So that by default that's true. All right. You finally updated an inventory you made with Flask to a server and left it running. Got paid for doing what was scary because it was the first time you made something with Flask and letting it run in a server. Well, that's cool. Well, I mean, it's it's cool that you actually got uh, got something up and running. That's really neat. <laughs> Changing from Windows to Linux was a pain. Yeah. String and plus arg. Now, didn't GD native have some sort of null?
<laughs> Trolled Woods. It's a cross platform solution. Never use any libraries, only standard. There's add item, just saying clear, etc. So add item, it's an option to this texture. That's perfect. I just give it a none and we're done. Ah, uh, but there's something extra. Do we have to pass it nil for variant? What do we actually give with this? Strange. Let's see what GD, what uh, Rust Analyzer will find for us. This is all in our code. Do we actually want to try to find this generated? Probably. <laughs> okay. Well, hold on. Let's go back one step. Why is it that add item enough for texture here? Oh, this is 081. No, no, no. We don't want that version. We want the other version. Where is it? Oh, that's strange. It used to show preview zero. Ah, much better. All right, there we go. Anything that impulse as arg here for texture. As arg. Alright, to explicitly pass the null reference to the engine, use null null or Godot object null. Okay. Godot object null it is. So where is null null? I don't know, which one reads better? I think Godot object null reads better. Supposed to null null. Come on, the trait bound 
blah blah blah. Function in null, null. Is not satisfied. Okay. It's not implemented on that. Does this need to be, um, I probably don't have the, tr well, it's in the prelude, as arcs is in the prelude. And didn't we pull in the prelude? Oh, resize that. Yeah, prelude's right there. This is meant to be simple. It is not. So anything into a good dot string, fine. Got it. The Boolean, I think we got that one just fine. The texture though. Interesting. So we impl as arg for all of these different cases for null, where t is a Godot object. Is t not a Godot object in this case? Where's t? t is a texture. It's a texture, not a Godot object. This here, I think, is Godot object. It's a top level object. Base for all classes. So why, why in the world would this not be the case? Unless, unless the texture isn't a Godot object. What, what's a Godot object and how is this different? Oh, it's a trait. Oh, how quickly I forgot that. And if we go back to the texture, Yeah, could do object right there. All right, but it's rough kind is rough counted. Does that matter in this case? Let's go back as arg. Let's read the documentation again. Trait for safe conversion from Godot object references into API method arguments. Sealed trait, no public interface. In order to enforce thread safety st statically, the ability to be passed to the engine is only given to some reference types. Specifically, they are uh, ref unique and all owned and borrowed shared references, including, including temporary ones. To explicitly pass a null reference to the engine, use null null or Godot object null. All right, now this puzzle, let's figure this out. The ability to 
the pass to the engine is only given to some reference types. Owned and borrowed shared references. Okay. And is it getting the wrong type from this? So what's the difference between null null and phantom data null? Or it's gonna be a good object null. Oh, it's a function call. I wasn't treating it as a Sure. Okay. My mistake. Unused result. Sure. It's just the okay that's getting passed through. Let's see if this will work. Hey, Xenocron, how's it going? How's the dog? Oh, my goodness. Oh, the dog. She's she's alive. Um, try, she's uh, come out of her uh, vet veterinary drug-induced stupor that she, she was suffering from the first day. Um... see she ended up see, I don't know if this will work getting this she was running and ended up <laughs> yeah that that's the thing uh, she ran really really far hit this really fast and yeah um where's the other photo that so she got she was like running super super fast chasing the cat they were playing war games she ran into the edge of that Apparently that thing, the vet said that went in and went 14 inches down her side. So because of the speed she was going, it just went like like down between her. Like it, it didn't go into her chest cavity though, which was, I guess, good for her. So they had to do this thing where...
Um, they basically had to cut her open and flush this thing. So she got stitches and all that, and and they they flushed her out over and over and over and over and over again. So, so hopefully she's not going to get any sort of like infection from debris still being inside of her. But yeah, she's not. <laughs> she, she's she's having a day. Quite a day. So, oh yeah, good stuff. So it looks like she's going to survive, which is the good part. Um, she's only about four years old, I think. All right. Now, while we're doing that. Puns. <laughs> wow and just can burn vegetable oil well sure you can burn most any organic matter corn leaves spices spices really sure Mussolini made trains run on time <laughs> all right sorry that was funny yeah I hope she I hope she uh, comes out of it it's gonna be a good two weeks and hopefully she can, well, let's see, Monday, she gets the drain taken out, which is what those tubes were. You didn't know Mussolini became an international meme? I didn't do there. Oh, look at that. It's working. Captain Xenocron. All right, that, that doesn't do anything though. Neat, I'm oh, sorry. That's really cool. All right, so now let's get this working. Does escape work here? It does. Log in, log in. And we're already logged in, so it's not going to work. Okay. Oops, over here. So now when we click on that button, we have 15 errors. Yeah, we. Not looking at that right now. Do this button. This signal's going where? On create actor press. It's going up three. One, two, three. It's telling scene change to do something. Okay, no, that's not going to work. It needs to go up to the form instead. So the signal is going to the wrong place. Disconnect that, connect it again to the form. Sure, on create actor pressed. Or just on create actor. Does Clippy dislike things that begin with underscore? Hmm, we'll see. All right, now we need another function exported. All right, so this should get wired up. Log info, debug, whatever. 
Ну, should see that log out. Well, it should log to terminal 5, that is. When we click on that. Error calling signal. Oh, VBox container? Really? Yeah, this. Oh, it is a V-Box. Okay. Method not found. Ah. Yay, exporting. Alright, so once we do that, we're going to send a message to the server asking them to create this, this actor, which we already have running in... So, so we know it works because of the server integration tests. Okay, let's rerun that just to make sure. Got to get back in the Godot swing of things here. All right, we clicked it. Great actor pressed. Lovely. Okay. I think we're going to do something very, very similar. Claim the owner. Just going to toss this into a um, runtime block. All right, now in, in here, and technically, we could send the first packet outside of this and then just wait for the response outside. I think I just prefer to do that all in there. All right, what's our create actor look like? Test actors. Looks like it's messages create actor. We give it, it wants the account ID and the name. I think the account ID is supposed to be. Wouldn't it already know the account ID? Why, why are we passing the account ID in? Oh, okay, it's skipping serialization there. That's fine. Which still is kind of weird. Because we're using the same code on the client and the server now. Maybe we should delete that piece. If we get rid of rid of that, the account ID there. What breaks? Should still be transparent. Yes, the null null is a Godot thing. It's because the Godot engine um, takes nulls in certain cases. And you have to be able to, well, pass the, the none option.
All right, one of the tests there. Did nothing else actually rely on that except for tests? That would be fantastic. Uh, it doesn't seem to be the case. Test prelude. Oh. Oh, it's, that was coming from game types. this value. Where are we? Spiner. Ooh, Spiner, Spiner, Spiner. Great actor. Yeah, because Spiner's actually using the same thing. Bum, bum, bum. Spiner's the database wrapper. And the database wrapper needs to know the type for this. Now, when we talk to the database, perhaps we shouldn't be using that. Yeah, we're using the same exact type. We could just give it a uh, account ID. actor set account ID will just be account ID now okay now that error is going to bubble back out fine Oh, I see. We'd been pulling it off of basically this value being passed in. Okay. That was so strange that I was adding it to that, that packet. Didn't ever think it saved? This function. All right, it's busy. Oh, I see, actually it built. She's not happy with this. All right. 
Now, because of that, I think the server... Well, let's go ahead and restart the server. Okay. Server's running again. I'm going to restart the client. Uh, but we didn't finish building that out for the client. Let's do that. And actors here. Okay. Yes, I know we're not using ID here. That's fine. Owner claim. We'll use owner in here eventually. Now, at this point, we're going to send the packet, and that's a create actor packet. Actually, I don't remember. Test actor mod. Really? There. Okay, yeah. Create actor. Oh, why don't we just grab that? Now at this point, we want the name that somebody has typed in, and we only want to do this if it's going to meet some minimal criteria. So arguably, this little button here down on the right, the Create Sea Lord button, shouldn't even be enabled if they haven't typed enough. We should filter out like invalid characters and whatever. And What, what is the name of this this object there? New actor name. I'm not a big fan of using spaces there. Oh, we'll do it. Rust Analyzer 1, timeout after 500 milliseconds. It is, it is having a day. What's our extension type for this? Don't uppercase that. Expect a dough. Invoke. Absolute path of child, okay. Get typed node. Now the type of this node is a line edit. Line edit, and we will give it its name. From the current place. So this is a relative path from our script. Our script is on form, so it's really just going to be hbox container, ew. Call that uh, new actor row name. There we go. So we'll get that back, or or what? Yeah, 
that returns a result. Or a legacy error. That should exist. Otherwise, we'll expect a doe we'll to do some sort of glorious crash. Name field is there. Let's go back to Godot. Or where you Godot? Documentation. Why didn't it take us to the other version? So if we go to documentation here, we're still at the 081. I guess we can click the preview version there. Okay. Now here we want to look up line edit. Could have done that inside of Godot, but. Oh wow, there is much more than I thought there would be. Just want text. That's a good dose string. All right. Now a good dose string. Can we take that to a Rust string easily? Wow. Is resource file, etc., etc. Okay. Two lowercase, two uppercase. Why is one way of getting it? What's export? Oh, that, that's something else, okay. From variant into Godot string to variant. Wow. There's got to be a better way than just calling format, because an empty format seems rather wasteful. It might be the only way, though. Capitalize, ends with, etc. From variant. What's element? All right, anyhow. There we go, now we have a string. That, that just seems so weird, like, um, seems like it's missing something. Types string two string on Godot string. Why? Okay. 
Where is this? Oh, it's way down here in the blanket of implementation. Or T is display. That's it. Okay. You wonder if CXX will improve Rust adoption in places with C++ code bases? I... I'm guessing that there are people that want to work on Chrome with Rust. And, and that'll be an excellent place for that sort of um, thing to foster, right? Just going to get bigger and bigger. I think Rust went about this the right way. Right? They kind of support these other, other languages, right? Being able to integrate well it was one of the main goals so I'm gonna guess that there's gonna be a lot of effort put into making that work like buttery smooth I also find it slightly amusing that um, like in in the discussion I don't know if you saw the uh, that uh, blog post about using rust and in Chrome and some of the goals and and how they don't want to see unsafe. There was a basic sort of desire to not see the unsafe C uh, keyword, but also that the unsafe C word shouldn't be like describing the C++ code as unsafe. It's kind of like this, this general feel, right? Whereas in Rust, when you use unsafe, you're saying that I will guarantee that these things are correct. And that's like the default for, for like C++. You're guaranteeing it. You're not relying on the compiler to guarantee these things. All right, so we've got the name. Oh, no, no, we just called two string on it. That's right. Okay, that looks good. Now inside of here, just pass in name. Then we'll send the request. We'll send this create actor request to the network. Net request, yada yada. I don't think we're going to get a response on this, are we? Is, is this a request or a callback? So, excuse me, a request is a callback. Is this, this must be a request. Yeah. Great actor, wait. And why does this await on that to actually return an error? Is it possible that this doesn't line up. Okay, I'm going to quit this. I need to close Vim and open it back up again. It's honestly okay. Yeah. See, that's the experience I had with with, with um, the GD native stuff. Yeah, I think that the C++ programmers just don't like their code being called unsafe. Oh, create actor. Yes, we need to pull that in. That's in messages.
Good, good. All right. There, finally, we're getting our error information. We have owner now. Owner. We don't need this yet. But we will. What is the response we get back from one of these? So if we go and look at the integration tests. We create the actor and we get an ID back. Oh, interesting. Do the send, receive next value. I see. Hmm. All right. Now in this case, we have a uh, create act. No, 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 not this case. This one with our code. New actor ID. Now we need to take the name and the ID and actually shove it into our existing list. I think I would like to just redo this section up here where we do the full get actor list and then select a specific one. Not too interested in C++. Yeah, I like just to see how it's, how it's propagating through the ecosystem. Still waking up. This is a rough weekend. I wonder. See, so yeah, I'm going to have to store this list. We should probably start dealing with this here. We need a little bit more state. I mean, it'd be nice if if the UI actually maintained that state. We could just add this actor to the very beginning of the list and select it. That would work. Let's do that. Doesn't become a second C++ like JavaScript is doing? Oh, what do you mean by that? I'm curious. I don't see JavaScript becoming C++. I see a lot of people using JavaScript. Oh, it's expanding its core every year? Yeah, it's not done, right? I, th I think that's where Lua did the right thing. And that it's like done. I very rarely does Lua like inch forward. I think they did recently though, right?
Sorry, I was on mute. So yeah, they ended up with uh, 5.4.0. And if you look at the time on this, in like five years, And they're not huge changes either. Gener what was it? Generational mode for garbage collection and const and to be closed variables. Interesting. I don't know what that is. I've embedded Lua into other things and it is a pleasure to embed into other things. Center data structs and APIs. Hmm, I see. The language that has 20 ways to do everything that's very hard to get to grasp on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's not zero-based. It's a one-based language, right? So you have to go into Lua knowing that, uh, which does mean that first getting into Lua, you will have many off-by-one errors because you're used to not having off by one errors from everybody with zero base language. String concatenation with dot. Oh, really? What? There's some things about Lua that feel just unnecessary. Yeah, the dot stuff. However, it's fairly stable, right? It's not changing much. It's pretty much just done. And only really ever changes if there's big changes that need to go in. And then there's a uh, Lua JIT, right? I forget what the homepage is for that. Oh, luajit.org. <laughs> Should have been able to guess. But I don't remember where this ended up. Yeah, looking for new maintainers. This thing was awesome. Status. Yeah, 5.1. This actually held a lot of people back from going to the latest versions like 5.2 and Lua 5.3, 5.4. Am I on Mac? I am on OS X. Let's see if we can insert so we should have a new ID back we have the name I want to rename this to just like GD name oh no 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 not that one this one Now here we'll do a map get node. Have to give it which node we want. Now in this case, we're here in form. Oh, and we want actors. So we want to get uh, form, actor, scroll, actors. Is that what we did up above? I guess it is. Yeah. Basically the same thing. It'll give us the list back. And instead of us adding a whole bunch of stuff to it, we'll add an item. Can we add an item at a position for this? I would rather it show at the beginning. Item list. Get item, get item, etc. Remove item, select, etc. Hmm. I was hoping I could put one at the very beginning. But 
but it looks like you just clear it and add them all again. Something that can go into Godot string, etc. We cannot give it a position where we want to add it. That's too bad. All right, well, because we have to store the list anyways, this actor list we need to save. I know, the other actor list. This, this one <laughs> down here. The actors dot actors. This one is what we want. Type actor list. So we're going to store that. Now, what is the type actor list? That is from game types. If we look at it, it's just a box with a little list in it. I guess it should be optional. It doesn't actually exist at some times. There we go. Now when we do get it back, we want to save that. Let's save that before we actually put it on the screen. The owner. Uh, what is the other function on this? Map get node. Map owner. So we end up passing the owner in, uh, but it's not mutable. Hmm. I'm trying to remember, do we need, do we need that? So what we're trying to do here is actually get a reference back to ourselves. Um, am I thinking about this in a width too complicated maybe? So what is in our owner is up there. We do have a mutable self here. We, we should just be able to do self.list.replace. Actors, actors. Now inside of here, let's iterate over that. Copy is not implemented for this type. True. because that's a boxed type inside of it. It can't be copy. Mismatch types. Self.list should be, ah, yes. So if that is something, we want to do something with it. Self.list.map, no. Can we flatten this? I want to return the inner iterator. So 
So we have an option. The options are iterable. We also have the element inside, which is iterable. And what is the rusty way of doing this? I mean, we could, of course, you know, if let sum this. Is there a way to just do this on the line? Oh, self dot list. We have too many lists. List is that item up there. That's the UI element. Um, Is that because of the the replace, or is that because of? So we find out over here. Cannot infer appropriate lifetime due to conflicting requirements. Oh, because we're using self inside of the spawn. Yeah, we can't can't move self into there. That's right. All right, which is why we were using owner and map map owner. Because the owner object here, through the owner object, you can actually get back to self. Self is the script that's attached to that UI element. So I think it's this here. Just double check that. No, it's also here. All right. So how do we get immutable? Map script. I think it's a map script. Let's go look. We give it a function, it gives us the script back. Fn1, so we get a C. In this case, we're actually calling script on map. And that there, I think, is from uh, Godot's side of the world. So if we go look at map. Is it user data map or the other one? using instance. Yeah, we're getting the script off of the instance. Here.
I see. So we basically have to use interior immutability mutability if we want to be able to modify that. All right, which is fine. We can do that. I wonder if there's a different way to do this though. Oh, that's right. There were. Uh, user data types. Or was that user data? Is it in native script? This module here. Okay. Native class and user data. In Godot Engine, the scripted behavior is attached to the base object through script in instances. Objects that store script state and allow dynamic dispatch of overridden, overridden methods. GD native exposes this to native languages as void pointer. Okay. Gudo is written in C++ and unlike Rust, it doesn't have the same strict reference aliasing constraints. This user data pointer can be alias mutably and calling for called freely from different threads by the engine or other scripts. Thus, to maintain safely, wrapper types are to be used to make sure the rest rules for references are always held for the self-argument. Thus, no unbound can occur because we read owner or put another script on it. Okay. To choose another wrapper type, put user data around it. Or if you're implementing native script, manually set the user data associated type to the type you choose. All right, mutex data, if your native class type is only send but not sync. Read write lock, if it's send and sync arc data. See, this just, I don't think this actually gives us the ability to, um, to get to that data. Okay, our data is send but not sync currently. You want safety for your methods, but can't tolerate the lock overhead on each method call. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Our login can tolerate the overhead. So actors here, I'm gonna give it one of these. There we go, we have actors there. User data. Oh, where is user data now? It's in native script, user data. didn't actually help us, did it? <laughs> no, because we need the interior mutability. Interior mutability. Wow. Hmm. 
All right, well, we could put this here. We could toss a mutex here. Is it arc data? Which one? Arc data. That's fine. There's our mutex. And we'll get the script here. We can say script dot the users list actors actors now do we have to return an okay here probably so we can use it import that did it not import it map script it's there there we go type and we can get a lock on it Ooh. ah yes the lock unwrap hopefully it's not poisoned nice now I actually think that this little list here should be a, a little different. Um, we can't modify this, and it might not matter. I mean, we could just create another list, a vector, and, and do what we need to get back to the box. But well, let's let's go ahead and do that. All right. So if we do this. We actually need to modify the list, so build up a new one using the new data and the old data. Why don't we just guarantee that there's always something in there? That'll make it easier. Interesting. Oh, because this is a mutable self. Why are we doing mutable self there? No more need for a replace. Now we should just be able to set what it's pointing to equal to that. No? <laughs> 
Is that a result from the lock? Oh, dot unwrap. Yeah, it got me again. Playing around a little bit right now with the um, what's it? oh the mutex card lock, the lifetimes. Um, well, I want to see if I can get that to go across threads. No, I can't. I could send the list. I just saved a copy of the list. I'd rather not. Send another cop. Or I sent the list already into self. All right. There's another way to do exactly this already in Godot. Instance map. I think it gives you both of them, where F is going to give you the base and the T. So in this case, if we did owner.map, We'll give us some sort of closure where we have script and well owner again. We would also want the uh, the oh I see the node type in there. item first. Undo it just slightly. Oh, but I can't get the list item out. Not that way. I have to do it inside of there. Alright. Get typed node. Going to be a list item. No more move. All right. UI list is equal to that. Good. moment let's clean up this down here the unwrap good or matter kicked in now we're not using self here we're using script list lock unwrap ah yes unsafe here Oh, we 
don't have that. Yeah, we've got a ref. The falling bounce, we're not satisfied. Oh, it, it's saying... Uh, okay, so it, this is a ref. What do we have for a ref? <laughs> well, we can assume safe on it. Get a T-ref back. T-ref. We can cast the instance. I need to go have some coffee. So I'm going to take a uh, 15 minute break here. Let's see. Let me make sure I got that set up. I think I had modified my script the other day, but it's probably set to like five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Fix that. Set up my watch. Ooh, actually, I updated this thing yesterday. Now it looks different. All right, well, I'll see you all in 15 minutes.
the zombie T-Rex is back, undiss swag with that old school rap, cause it's Curtis Blow with that nerdist flow, getting pterodactyl flag on the track. Four records deep, five VPs, one mixtape cause you can't kill me. Poison when I spit it, Komodo Dragon, yeah. Nerdcore Royalty, Komodo Dragon. Says COVID daily in loquaciousness, no rapper ever born did a rhyme like this. MC Lars with the rhythmic alacrity, over tour skills causing mad catastrophe. The whole crew sick, like Kubrick, got your eyes wide shut for this apocalypse. Let's face it, I'm an awesome rapper, post-punk laptop velociraptor. And if I won't dumb it down for the mainstream fan, cause the mainstream fan has lame taste, man. Yeah, I said it. And I'm flying over hurdles, keep it underground like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. See a funny thing happen on my way to the stage. Way laid by a stegosaurus, second on my leg When I made my escape, it was way too late Got a T-virus strain all up in my veins Bringing pain like the Necronomicon Iguanagon loose up at Comic-Con Tearing up your lawn like a Mothlodon Take away your girl like I was Donkey Kong Jurassic Park, this van in your city Every time I rock a show Cause the fans all bounce when I light up the room With that pyroclastic flow, yo! No mercy, no surrender Zombie T-Rex, I'm killing it forever All right. Coffee time turned into clean the dog wound time with a very tiny touch of coffee at the end. I've got a full cup of coffee now. Now, what's, what type do we end up having here? What is owner? Owner in this case is a shared rough. <laughs> Nikolai, good morning. Yeah, I notice that every now and then. Um, people will end up... Oh my goodness, I got... <laughs> Zombie T-Rex. <laughs> Uh, sorry, listening to the song. Um, I like the MC's Lars stuff. It's a lot of fun. Finland, hey. Across the pond. Nice. You'll see people uh, refollow, and I'm not sure why. Like if if uh, Twitch is having some sort of like syncing issue or DB issue or whatnot, I tend not to... Uh, do the shoutouts in the stream, but I definitely appreciate the follows. As, as a hardcore lurker myself, I, I don't mind staying in the shadows. Alright, the yelling though, I gotta skip that one. It's a fun song. Alright, so in this case, we have a rough node shared. You can see it right here. Um, and on ref, we have basically different kinds of ref. We got shared refs, we got unique refs, we have local thread refs. So we have to look at the right type of view for this. Now, what do we have a ref of? This is owner. So this is a scene graph object. It is not a reference counted object. Okay. Thread local reference counter types like this. So manual manage types like node can be aliased or sent between threads, but they can be used safely. Won't be automatically freed on drop, etc., etc. All right, so we need to be able to basically go from rough node shared, which why is it shared at this point? Is it because we ended up Yeah, we had ended up with a tref node shared, so we, we ended up calling claim on that, and it ended up getting a ref on it. I see. So I'm trying to get the instance. We could do a cast instance. Or does it cast take us to an instance? No, as a ref. 
What's the downcast to a native class instance, keeping the reference count? Okay, there are no reference counts in this case. Ooh, is this inside of a block? Where's our block? Uh, this is where it's thread access in a Godot object. All right, we don't want that section. All right, where ref is shared. We do want this one, okay. We have assume safe. There aren't many functions we can actually call on this. Okay, here's our manually managed kind. And this is what I think we have at this point. Assume safe if sane, etc., etc. All right, and that'll give us a T-ref, not a T-rex, a T-ref. And then from there we can cast instance. If we have thread access, we don't. Azref will give us a T. Okay. So I think we just want to call the, uh, basically treat this. Oh, I didn't check. Was this, this is for thread access only? All right, this is where access is thread access. Looking through some of these real quick. I mean, having this thing kind of buttoned up makes it really hard to use. Um, I want to go look at our extension traits again. So we figured some of this out and buried it in here. So we ended up calling it assume safe of sane on this, where self is a manually managed subclass of node. So we can call that. What would this give us? This gives us shared T. And then we can call it cast instance. Oh, I didn't see that on there. Okay. I thought cast on the T ref. Let's go back the other way. Here was only for. Oh, maybe, maybe we do have thread access then. All right. So this is this is essentially what we're doing. We want to get down to the map mutable here. Basically, wow, we have to do all of these? Hey, today's task. Uh, good question. Well, let's uh, let's reset. All right. We have the client logging into the server. Yay! I need some like sound effects for like applause. Um, and. Right now we're working on creating characters. So here, if I say, I'm gonna have a captain, Nikolai, and I create it, it, it sends a packet to the server, but um, doesn't actually show up here. At least I think it might send it to the server. If we reload that, log in, log in. Yeah, now we have Captain Nikolai. The thing that we're working on is actually updating the list after a captain is created. This is... There's a lot to do for that.
assume safe of sane, yada yada. See, in this case, we have map script, we have get type node. We, we've got a couple of these, these assisting um, traits here. In this case, we'll call map script if user data is a map, etc. Oh, that's right, we can do that. Okay, map script immutably. Oh, I forgot about that one. And that just gives us immutable. Uh, that might be all that we need. In fact, oh, it's not implemented for arc data. Uh, that's right. It only gets implemented for things of a certain kind, right? Or it's map mutable. Viable clan member? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> uh, no thanks. I, I'm not clicking on that. I don't know if if you've just been lurking or what. Oh, sorry. It. I, I was I was a viable clan member. Are you? I was under the impression you might have been a bot for a moment. Are you a bot? <laughs> oh, good morning. How are ya? Last I checked, I wasn't sure. All right. Oh, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at that right now. The uh, link, Software Engineer 3D. You want the salary of that job? Unpaid? <laughs> uh, is this like an internship, like an unpaid internship? Yeah, internship slash work begins on the 15th of September. Yeah, most of the places I've worked, we definitely try to do paid internships. I mean, especially if, if we're getting value out of it. Advanced math. Advanced knowledge of writing code for 3D math. Uh. Huh. That sounds interesting. You could apply worst worst case. I mean, they kind of get they get what they pay for, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. It... Yeah, I'm going to add some spacing in here. Okay, so we get the instance. 
Yeah, if we have map mutable. I think we can only do map mutable on certain types. Who uses map mutable? All right, and what types uh, trade for wrappers that can be wrapped mapped mutably? I think this is going to be, um, oh look, local cell data, mutex data, rewrite log data. So if we change to mutex data, we'd probably be okay. Let's do that. Let's change our type to mutex data. Because this is not in a performance critical section of code. What do I think about vacancies in Rust? I'd like to change your stack. Goes the winner in the big gap. I I think that it's they're they're probably out there. Um, I'm guessing that places just aren't advertising as much that you know they have Rust gigs. But I would expect kind of small firms and large firms to have Rust work. Right? If you look at the big tech companies, they probably have Rust openings. And then, you know, the random small gigs. I don't know why I had so many of those on there. Yeah, I don't even think debugs actually needed here. Like, what am I going to do? I guess I could print out self. All right. Now in this case, we should have, yeah, map script immutably. Okay. So now this is working. But this bit here, I would like to have like a map mutable as well, which really just does all of the uh, kind of heavy lifting for, for being able to fetch this stuff and let me work on it. Um, let's add that to extensions. So map script, we have map script mutably map script, but not a map mutably. You're in both Rust and Go Slack communities. Go is post new vacancies every day. Yep. Yeah, it's it's definitely a younger language. Uh, it's harder to get into, and it's just going to take time. And part of the reason why I've been learning Rust is, or in the undetermined you know, for some undetermined point in the future, I might actually look for some Rust gig. I think it'd be nice. I like how much the compiler does for you. And I think the Rust stuff is only going to get better. I don't see Rust going away. How long have I been learning Rust? Since September 12th. A little bit every day last year. So I'm coming up on my anniversary, aren't I? Wow, yeah, it's a couple weeks. All right. See, I thought this here, this map script thing, there's a lot of setup for this. Um, yeah. Implement missing members. Get rid of those, those things there. There, you can be happy now. Um, it's basically, I want to do something. It's more like this. 
Basically, I'm just avoiding these three lines, aren't I? Assume safe of sane, cast instance, and this other piece. Yeah. Yeah, the cl it, it is nice to have that all back together. It really is. <laughs> it does feel good. All right, F in this case. This is going to take a mutable C. Ah, actually, I want two things in here. I want the script and the client. Now, in this, do they also have a map mutably? Fn ones. They do, a map mutable. Okay. Now, what's it saying? It plus stricter requirements. Oh, sure. Yeah, I think this FN once is actually wrong there. In fact, it should look nearly identical to this. Now that's not quite what I want, is it? Because I want to have both the script and the owner at the same time. This here, when we call map mutable off of the script, probably give it a function though. That gives us the target back out. Where was... See, I thought there was one off of, what, what was it, instant? Instance. Didn't this have a map? This has a map on it. Basically, I want to mimic this here. Or F receives a T. Here we have instance. I think we just want to call. Map mutably. And we'll give that F. Give that a match. Then we'll just figure out what we're going to do on the, uh, the tail end of that. All right. I'm trying to find the, uh, <laughs> this one up here. There we go. Oh, interesting. User data. There we go. We want it this way, not the other way. That one. And this type isn't right here. Am I using Rust on the back end too? Yes. Yes, Rust on the client and the front end. The front end and the back end. Now, 
I actually want this here. I need to get the types right. So what do we have here? We have T, which is a Godot object, and C, which is a native class. All right, so C is the script, T is the owner. Did I get that backwards? Hmm, interesting. What theme is this? Uh, we do get this question a lot. This is Challenger Deep. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Now that access there, this is the access out of GD native. It's not finding that. Where is it? Access. Oh, access type in this case was generic. Yeah, I don't have a value for this. All right, let's update the trait. Should be a result with a self error. I keep going back and forth on this. Okay, well, up and down. Hey, good morning, sloth. Sloth soft. <laughs> good morning. Yeah, you're welcome. And thanks, Santa Crown. <laughs> And the pretty dot files are much better organized than mine. They are not my dot files. They are Xenocron's dot files. <laughs> All right, so what's going on? Mammy, it's not a member of map script. What? Really? Map script. Looks like it's there. See that class based. Oh, because of that. Unused import, fine. Just because we didn't get there yet. Unreachable, yes. And it's mostly because that's in the wrong spot. All right. So this map mutable should take an F. Or T is mutable and T base and access. Okay. Expected if it once found F, the 
afraid I thought. Mutable C. It's not oh, that's not implemented for F. Isn't that nearly the same thing? F and ones, yes. Mutable C, yes. T or F. Some arbitrary lifetime. T, and I think I think we got the base correct on that. Hmm. I think it's the access bit down here at the end. And here it's where it's, it's thread access. Oh, I see. Let's see if we remove that. Should default to thread access. You've been looking into Godot recently. You're mostly a web dev, just with a sparky interest in game dev. Choosing Rust to work with it. Okay, is there a technical reason or is it because you're mostly experienced at ease with it? Yeah, it's mostly just coder use, not having to switch between languages when I go between the server and the client. Um, it's not really for performance reasons or stuff like that. I think using GD native would have would have been fine for this. Um, there's one case where I think I probably would need performance and would end up using some sort of GD native for it. I want to get to building out some uh, procedurally generated meshes soon. And that is, I think, where Rust is really going to shine. Now, but in the general use case, I think that um, actually building UIs and building apps using Godot, uh, not just for game dev, but for general applications would be quite nice. It has a small runtime. Uh, you can you can have some sort of deliverable in like a 20 megabyte zip or smaller if you're you know clever with them so you could create little desktop apps and whatnot really easy with godot so in fact i i think that's probably a really nice way to go especially if you want to get past you know Past having things on the web, having things local and just running just fine. With an app, not a web page would be nice. I myself am also a web dev during the day. This is what I do in my free time. <laughs> All right. Let's ask Rust Analyzer to fill in these branch arms. More of the CLI guy local. Oh, bash on that. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I think if I delete this line, because it's unused, I think it's just going to come back in a moment. All right. Now, if this isn't okay, probably want to do something similar. Just pass the result through. Otherwise, if we get some sort of error here, you know, I'm going to just use the same mapping that we had before. What this is going to do is this is going to map the error saying, hey, there was a map script error for this. We're going to include the type information with this as well. It still doesn't think it needs that. So because this isn't a trait, but a function. Yeah, OK. We're not actually using the trait. 
Well, that's right. That trait is for something else. All right, now back to actors. Type annotation must be <laughs> is needed at this point. Fine. Let's see what is a type on this. I think it's a node. There we go. It's not a list item, it's an item list. I got that I keep typing that the other way. There we go. And we need to know this type. And this here is a a mutable self, whatever we are, actors. Oh, mismatch type in the closure. Expected signature of FN. Mutable something. T ref. That's true. That's true. Now, was I doing this in the right spot? <laughs> so in this case, we have the script. Yeah, we're getting the lock on that. Do we even need the lock still? And we went, we went to using the mutex data. Let's see if we can drop that mutex. Ah, yes, now we can't lock on it, which is fine. Lock unwrap. That's interesting find actors in the scope and this here we get the map node what are we doing in this case we're doing the on-create actors I'm just gonna comment this out for a moment so I want to see if we're going to have lifetime issues wanted to get past the uh, ooh, owner needs to be mutable there Interesting. All right. Unused result type, fine. So if this fails, Now, in theory, this all compiles and everything runs. It look, it's going to compile if we tried it. However, it would be the same as we had before. So let's take it one step further and get this piece working. We've got map mutable on this.
So the script here, I actually need to do something a little special in that we're going to modify the list of actors. We're going to push one up onto the list. Or we could do this in a slightly different way. What if we had another function which basically drew the, um, the list? So basically extract this out to its own common functions instead of having to do this twice. And this would be across the weight boundaries. Let's see. It does not need to be async function. Update actor list or draw actor list. Take that, let's drop this in here. So we either use invoke or call it directly. If we call map on that, script owner, and we should be able to say is script dot draw actor list. And we pass owner in something like that. Does this have a return value? It says it's unknown. Fine. Fourteen errors. Oh, sure. <laughs> we'll get back to you. So if we do map mutably, then we get that. All right, we're gonna toss map on it as well. We have map, where was it? Extensions. map just happens to be a modification of map mutable um, you know what let me go grab that type information here so I think it's just a pass through where we lose a little bit of type information Self time map mutably. I think we just, can just call it like so. Oh, lowercase f.
I think there's a way to actually cast that. I don't know what it is, though. All right. Map error. Okay. Basically the same thing. Oh, map is not implemented for that. Ah, because our constraint is wrong. It'd be nice if that worked. All right. No method name map. Why, why, why? It's not an instance. Excuse me, a rough. It's a... Now TREF for my stuff. Good morning, Peyton Rules. Welcome, everybody. Hope you had a good stream, Peyton Rules. 
Or do we just say Peyton? I don't know. What do you prefer? Yeah, it looks like we have to do the claim in order to get this. In order to get the ref. We could also do an as ref, which gives us a T. But that only exists if we have... Uh, Yeah, because in this case, it's going to be a node. You did, and you'll accept either. Awesome. Well, we're actually working on... Um, actually, what what were you working on? Oh, the Godonra, same as... Oh, awesome. Very cool. Yeah, I'm kind of in the depths of it at the moment. Um, nice. Oh, I see blackjack programming. Haha, <laughs> that's cool. Nice. Yeah, I... I I went a little crazy and added uh, async to mine, so my code isn't what I would say common for what most people are going to be using for this. Um, because I'm dealing with some uh, networking stuff, I wanted to pull an async. And I'm not using the Godot async, I'm using, excuse me, not async, I mean uh, networking. I'm using uh, native. So, it's going to networking from Rust. Although I think it would be really neat to have a Rust wrapper around the Godot networking. That would be cool. So in this case, it's just a node. If we have node, we should be able to... Hmm. I'm trying to evaluate. Do I need to do the exact same stuff here? We should be able to get the type node. So that's fine. Yeah, we could probably avoid this whole mapping here. Plan to build up more complicated stuff over time? That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Gonna give you a follow. All right. Hopefully, we'll be able to raid you sometime. Do I even need that as ref? This seems okay now. We'll see if that comes back. All right, and then we're going to also draw the list again later. So after we get everything, we're going to mutate the list somewhere here.
and then draw it again. Need to create a vector from self.list. Ah, but we don't have self. All right, we do in there. What we call a script. So we'll say with capacity here, and it'll be self dot list dot length plus one. Now we should be able to then insert ours here. It's going to be a tuple with some sort of actor ID and actor name. Then actor list. This is going to need to be a mutable list. Extend from self.list. Yeah, where's the actor name? Create actor, we'll get that. Oh, I see. Actually, I should just be able to go two string on this. Yeah, it takes a reference to self on there. point I update the UI with the response a new actor ID let's just call it actor ID extend it from the list I don't think that's going to work it's not an iterator okay Expected reference. What? Found tuple. Ah. Uh. Oh, that's that's different. That should not be a packet, client bound packet kind. What is this list? Yeah, it should be a tuple, type ID, not a packet. Script. Oh, 
Oh, the actor ID is the wrong kind. Oh, got it. Okay, we actually have to unpack the actor ID. That's what it is. What do we call for this? I don't remember. So when we get something back, try into message. Got it. It's not going to know the type. We'll have to give it a type. Closer. <laughs> so close, so close. Yeah, it's not actually getting an iterator of the same kind here. Do we need to map that and borrow it? What else can we use instead of extend on vector? Append. Ah, oh, but is script mutable in this case? It's not. Do a map mutable on that. Now it should be mutable. There we go, extend. So we drain one, pushing it into the other. And that's not gonna work, is it? Um, can we call drain on it? Maybe we could just remove it, can't we? Maybe we could replace it with something else. What else? Yeah, this is if it was a vector, but we're actually with a box. We all the way back up to the top. What does box have? From iterator, yeah. it has an iterator, and into iterator, if its i is an iterator. So maybe we just take that off of there. We could replace it, centered member place. Move source into the reference destination, returning the previous. Okay. Let's 
going to want that to be mutable. Ah, uh, but we can't iterate over that. Let's see, so it's found boxers. It's expecting the mutable element. Size for value cannot be known. Okay, empty array. Having that be a box instead of a vector does add some hoops to this. All right, yeah, we definitely need some some type info on this. This actor ID is going to be what a. Uh, Actually, what are they sending back? Let's look at the test code. Tests actor mod. Try into message. Unwrap. That's for the callback. Oh, do we have to unwrap the callback first? No, that should have been done for us already. Try into message. We just need the ID. Where's ID? It's in messages? No, game types. Okay. What is ID? Oh, that's what we use for sending stuff back and forth. So it's really ID.0 that we want. All right. <laughs> okay. This should be script. So in Rust, whenever you see things like that, here, let's put that back for a moment. What was the error? The error is, come on, cannot infer appropriate lifetime. Found this, expected that, and you know that yourself doesn't actually support um, you know, cloning and you didn't clone, so it can't move across from outside of this uh, closure into this closure because the closure might exist longer than self does the key is then to use the right values in this case we get script which happens to be the same thing we have to use it 
Okay, actualist is mutable now. And we didn't use the result, okay. So draw actor list, then it would be very, very nice if we could actually select the first element. All right, let's try it out first, though. The game server should already be running. Let's log in. Good. All right. Captain Peyton rules. It, it didn't do anything. Nothing. Did I not click the button? Is that, is that button not wired up? Oh, here. We sent some data. Create actor is pressed. Sent some data. Attempting to decode frame. Got some information back. This might be a UUID. Why was there no... No errors, no nothing? Oh, because we didn't set it to ourselves. We we created this new actor list, but then neglected to do the standard memory place again. All right. Because actual list needs to be updated so that we can actually draw it. Ah, yes. Now, this is a neat thing about vectors. You, you can actually take it down into a box, and it basically makes like a read only vector, removes all the extra mutating stuff from it. Yeah, we're we're dropping it. In the... Okay, we'll give that a build. Did we miss something? Does not need to be mutable. Fine. What else? Yes, mutex is gone here. What else? Create actor. In the tests, count ID is not used here. Ah, right. Because we don't pass it in anymore. It's implicit. Okay, we clean that up and come on. Must analyzer help me out here? Oh, fine.
All right, a couple different places. No more account ID needed on that. Which means that it's not actually needed here. Good question. Does huh. just wondering, does the client actually need to know what its account ID is? Probably not. Could it be useful? Maybe. It'll definitely know what its actor ideas are. I don't think it'll hurt. Hey, Peyton Rules, you're welcome. You're welcome. Just want to prefix it. There we go. Okay, we've got all of that done. Looks like it's built. Let's give it a run. Again, here we go. It's our list. Wow, that we clicked that button a couple times, huh? <laughs> now we need a delete. All right. All right. We need we need another. Captain, or was Miles? Not at the bottom. It's actually at the top, wasn't it? Oh, <laughs> Berduda, that's a lovely one. That is gold. That's good. All right. <laughs> Gotta save that one. Even the cake was in tears. Yeah, the kids. The kids. When I tell them, they're gonna be like out to get you. Like Bear Duda, it was you that fed Dad all those jokes all those years. For that, you must pay. All right. Where did it go? Is it still running? I don't see it on my screen. Oh, there it is. Now, Robos Miles, where is it? Oh, here. Why did it end up here? 
Ah, because we duplicated the list. We added to it but without clearing it. Okay. Gotta fix that. So this, uh, this draw. Most actors. Draw actor list must first clear it. I thought I did that somewhere else. Oh, here. We could just self dot draw list owner. There we go. Drying that up. Do, do, do. Okay. I've got way too many of those. It's actually a little distracting. Um, I'm going to log into Postico and see if I can delete some of these. <laughs> Holy cow. I've got a ton of test failure databases in here. Does it make sense? I've Oh, it's, it doesn't let me select like a ton of. Can I drag and drop? No, I'm. I am not going to select each one of those. All right, forget it. All right. Close that and run it again. There we go. Let's create a new one. All right. I think we want that to scroll back up and maybe have have it selected. The next time this loads, it'll actually be at the bottom of the list. Hmm. It would be nice to have have these in some sort of predictable order, like some sort of order of importance. What else can we do with that list? Let's see. It's an item list. Oh, GD native. Ah, I nailed the mic. I can set the select. Oh, the scroll is actually a different control, isn't it? Yeah, calling select should be fine. I guess that's if we have a zero. What if there isn't anything in there? We're going to go on a little bit of a tangent here. I'm going to, I'm going to look and see if there's any news. I haven't done that in a little bit. Ooh. Nice. Okay. GD script progress report. New GD script has now merged. Very cool. Man, they are, they're like working on this. What about the dev vlog?
main changes. Annotations. Oh, nice. Properties. Await oh, instead of yield. Is it just deprecated or are they forcing this update in like a minor version, a patch version? Krasank, good morning. Doing all right. No merge into master branch. That's oh, that's for four O. That's for four O. Oh, link here. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to try to do a select on this. Oh, that's what we were doing. We're going to click on learn at the top. That's where the documentation is. Item list. And I want to figure out that, that clipping issue I have. I don't know if you saw it, um, but over here, this this scroll, the box goes below some of these other elements. Even though the text doesn't, the text gets clipped out, but not the border, which makes it look really, really weird. So you can see as it scrolls up, that little bar, blue bar at the top is going up and down, when arguably it shouldn't. So either I need to disable that. Or do something, like I have no idea why it's doing that. Oh, uh, what language is that? That's going to be in. I think you're referring to the uh, GD script language. They have their own scripting language, which looks a lot like Python. It's very much like Python. All right, let's go to methods here. If we say select an item and we get it wrong, what happens? Does not trigger the selection signal. That's fine. All right, let's give it a really big number and see if it blows up. Maybe not that big. All right, just big enough. Good. I'll rerun it. Hopefully it doesn't blow up if... Okay. Does it select the last one? No. It also doesn't seem to panic. Errors. Yeah. Okay, it's just out of bounds. So if we're going to get warnings and errors from it, I'll go ahead and guard against it. What's our actor list? Self.list.is empty. If it's not empty, then we'll select the first element. Also, we need to get the uh, actor scroll element here to go back up to the very, very top. And that's a scroll container. All right, back up to the top. I'll search on the left. It's often faster actually using the uh, documentation in Godot. Viewport container, yada yada. No, no, let's just come back over here. Oh, this is interesting. What is this item list here? Get okay, V scroll. Right. 
returns the object ID associated with the list. Oh, that's its scroll bar. Wait, 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 hold on a sec. Does that does that control actually have that? Maybe I don't need this actor's scroll, the scroll containers for the list item. That'd be nice. Resized, draw. Yeah, we're looking at item list. Provides a selectable list of items that may be in a single or multiple column. Select mode. I don't see anything about scroll scrolling in here. Rectangle clip content, yes. Fixed icon size, icon scale. Auto height is currently set to false. Max columns. All right. I want to see if this will scroll. This, that other method that we saw was suggesting that I mean, this V scroll bar, get V scroll. All right, we're gonna we're gonna try that. All right, actors here. Yeah, I know. I think this thing had a certain like width and height set up and all that. Top, right, bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and delete that. Oops. Delete node. Yeah. Actors. Okay. We're going to shrink that a touch. That's better. One fifty. Almost negative 50. Just giving it consistent padding on all the sides. Now this thing here, select mode single, yes. Auto height, I don't know about that. What if I say off? Or will this give us a little help on the tooltip? No. auto hide do if true the control will automatically resize the height to fit its content okay, we don't want that we want it to scroll so far so good actually it's not bad but why oh and now all of our paths are wrong Okay, let's go update our paths. Oh, only one place. That's nice. Okay, that's built. Rerun it. Log in, log in. Oh, that's so much better. So that's a lot better.
That is great. <laughs> I'm like really, really happy about that. All right, and if we scroll down to the bottom, let's say, Captain Wounded Dog. Yeah, that needs to go back up to the top. Even though it's selected, it didn't scroll that. So if it's not empty, UI list, get V scroll. I think that's what it was. Let's go back to the script docs. I'll close the output window. Get V scroll. That returns a V scroll bar. A vertical version of scroll bar, which goes from top minimum to bottom max. Okay. Theme. All right, it looks like it just extends from scroll bar. What does scroll bar have on it? As properties, custom steps, steps, size vertical. Can we set the value? Okay, inherits from range. <laughs> Uh, methods. Okay, we got properties here. It's got share and unshare. Value change. Oh, it's got a signal, so you could check to see if these things are actually scrolling. But we could set its value to zero. All right. Zero dot zero, I think. It's a float, so probably. No field value on option. Oh, does that return an optional reference? Ah, because the scroll bar doesn't always exist. Oh, neat. Okay, so, well, we've got an option there. Map, scroll bar. Scroll bar, not scroll bark. We don't want to do it that way, do we? We want to do iter. Maybe a four each. Let's see, I didn't see what the error was. no value on that oh that's a UI element of course well of course it's a UI element oh wow okay all right so in this case scroll bar dot map owner bar That's going to need to be a proper block because it has to return a little bit more. Which also means, hopefully the res result of that can just get ignored. Oh, is there, did I get too many in there? I need a uh, curly right there. There we go. That should give us the owner. Okay, so for every scroll bar that we have, import map owner, fine. There should only be one scroll bar. Why isn't that taking? Okay. Just give it a save. Good. Oh, it's not mutable.
All right, now this bar here. Let's kill that, that's slowing it down. Expected type unit, found result. True. Now it's going to tell us that this is unused. So that's mutable. Now what we call map owner. Oh, we don't. Drat. Okay, so technically we don't want to use that one. We want to use the mutable one. We have map script mutable and map mutable, but not map owner mutable. Isn't it saying that the value is a method? Oh. Take, oh, attempted to take value of method value on type. Methods are immutable, of course. I just saw the word immutable and thought, uh, but you are absolutely right. How do we pronounce this? Is it Guerri Toro? Guerri Toro? Like, I think it's not quite warble. I'm trying to translate that. Um. Okay. Yes, you are absolutely right. Value there. See, I thought I could use this here. it's a property it doesn't look like I can actually set something on it In share I can unshare and then that just has control over it it's unfortunate that, that I have not found a way to scroll yet See, I was thinking scroll bar would have something This is just for the steps, being able to control the step. I want to know how to set it to something. However, I feel like. <laughs> All right, now range here. It does have these values, but I don't think we can actually set them. See, I was trying to just set the, the value here. Oh, it's got set value and get value. Oh, it's got a getter. Okay. That's why. Because we're, this is get value. We need to call the setter. Guarito. Oh, see, that's what I wanted to say at first. result there this this kind of I occasionally want a return value here so every single one of those is suffering from having a return value all right these little nice to haves there are so important just having having the UI feel like it's not working against you is really really important in applications Log in, log in. All right. <laughs> Barito. All right. And it didn't scroll up. Why not? Did we get a warning or anything? No, it's definitely within range. 
Bar that's at value, that should do it. That's a float. Ratio, what is this? Rounded, allow greater, etc. Oh, you know, let's check on five. Did this, did it die? No, still okay. I'm gonna run it again in there just to see. Cause I want that to scroll back up, but we missed something. All right, need, need another captain. Okay, so there's our data coming back in. Still Papa. Uh, the D is lowercase, isn't it? Oh, it did it. So this should also clear out. Gonna say I have this one selected at the very bottom. Hit create. Takes us to the top. Sets that. Okay, we also need to clear this, and I think we're done after that with this. Other than, of course, wiring up select. But I think the, all the uh, the other little ancillary things will be be ready. Okay. So as soon as we grab that, we need to clear it, but only on success. So once we've gotten something back from the server that says, hey, this worked, then we will clear it. I don't want somebody like typing something with like an illegal character and then the whole thing goes away. So if you're a slow typer, that that sucks. Even if you're a fast typer, having to do things just because somebody decided to clear a form is awful. What? <laughs> you discovered a great website to teach people to type faster? <laughs> that, that's where I learned to kind of level up my Dvorak. Oh, Typing Club. Is it good? You like it? started I mean, the graphics are, are decent so far introduction oh nice typing jungle badges save progress log in this does look good videos animations are good simple design nice well, thank you for that. I'm going to save that. Always looking for stuff uh, to help with, like, you know, teaching the kids to type. And um, one of them that I like is just for random practice, type fighter. I think I ended up getting this set up for the kids. Type fighter. <laughs> Maybe it's not this one. Yeah, I don't remember seeing this one. That looks kind of fun, though. Um, oh, goodness. Oh, type. T-Y-P. Oh, my. Uh, T-Y-P. How is Elder Scrolls Online the first result for this?
How, how does that make sense? It's just impossible on an ISL layout. Hmm. And I remember being in like typing class forever ago. Old machines, all those clickety click click keyboards. Thirty kids in a class. Then the thunderous roar is, as they say, go. Man, my coffee is still warm. I switched up mugs. This one's better insulated. All right, we were going to clear that. All right, so if we get it back, we'll do it here. Let's do a map owner here. Yeah, that's going to be an end node. Something like that. We'll probably just... Um, can't I just do like a get type node on that? Or I can't because of the... Um, like a TRF now, or something, something else. What is owner at this point? It's a ref node. Okay, so it's not even a, ref, a TRF. And so when we do this, this could be a TRF. Get type node. Didn't I have some other function for doing just this? Map script. Yeah, we had get type node. And this is for something that maybe we should just set that up. I don't think I even use abs path of child anymore. Yeah, let's get rid of that. We don't need that. I think the problem is going to be that we wouldn't be able to return something from a shared object. Is that... Oh, let's try it. So this is for every N. Well, it's a good object and that. But we want to do it for... So why, why wouldn't that work here? Let's try to use that. Get type node. interruption here. So this node here that we want to clear
clear out is going to be a what? This thing. Back to the 2D scene. I am so glad that that thing changed. I want to make sure that's all saved up. But this here is a line edit. Okay. You can kind of see on the on the right, just below this here, those group headers tell you the basically the types and the inheritance trees. Uh-oh. Got like computers inside using internet. All right. So at this point, this line edit, hopefully we can get that. So we just want to clear that out. Godot is pretty cool. I like it though. Good, got it. So we want to set the text on this. So we're going to call that and see if we can get this at this point. Okay. Yeah, okay, so it doesn't want to do that for a ref. definitely do need to do that inside of the map. Well, let's just do that in here then. Oops. There we go. We get the line edit. name control dot set I'm guessing it's going to be a set text Just something I can take an empty string kind of like that it's a little slow today that should have formatted it's a little unnerving why would it do that Oh, it takes... Really? Oh, it, it, of course, it wants a path. Um, what is the path to that? This thing is called... What? This name. Okay, new actor row slash name. This has to be in an unsafe block. Actually, why didn't that freak out? Why? Hmm. All right, and now for the uh, for the setting of the text, for clearing that on that line edit. What do we call methods? Ah, they just have a clear function. Perfect.
and we'll clear. That should have folded nicely. Oh, there it goes. We don't need to save that to a local. Good. Login form. Actually, I don't know if it actually picked it up. Actually, it didn't. <laughs> I know that now because build wasn't running. Okay, let's come back over here, close that. Okay, build finished. Run it. Log in, log in. Oh, good. And it cleared it. Perfect. Very cool. That's working. Select. Does that do anything? Gives us an error. <laughs> Alright. Well, I'm glad this is working. I'm really glad. We're going to hit a save point here. Control C, Control Z. Add legacy character. Legacy Rust, Messages and Server, and Spiner. That's right. <laughs> you like not having to see somebody drag lines around to connect blocks in order to make a game? All the new kids are doing it. Alright, I gotta turn the screen on for my daughter. I will be right back. And we're back. Okay. I also had to adjust the sound on it. Now the next piece is going to be a little bit trickier. Um, because we commented out all the server code for what, what you end up getting into. So if I look at server lib, currently we're able to get through the auth stuff, Character selection, which is this section here and there. You know so little about game engines and game design. So, I, I think a lot of people would say the same thing about programming, right? Making apps or web pages or whatever. I think the difference with um, between like applications and games is that games are 
not necessarily tools. I would say that they're more akin to like a book or a movie. Right? You're telling a story, you're conveying some sort of emotion. Right? You want people to experience something. And so when you think about how you do that, it's, it's more the storyteller's craft. So when you build something, like in, in my case here, I'm, I'm building something where people will interact with each other. And so that's it requires a different set of, of tools as opposed to like if you're making some single player game and you're going for some sort of emotional reaction, which actually I have another game in mind that, that I want to build out. And I might do that as either an interim project or after this project. Um, but unfortunately, this project's looking like it's going to be taking a while. Uh, but the idea would be, in my next one, is that I, I want to mostly uh, audio-based, right? So you're interacting with some sort of um, some sort of device and helping people using um, a system of controls. I have some friends that are uh, voice actors. They're actually left software engineering to become uh, become actors, and so I might reach out to them in order to to get some help on this this next game I want to do. But the idea would be really just to pull on your basically emotional strings in order to build it out, because I think voice can be very very engaging, especially. Like when it's coming across something that looks like a phone, right? <laughs> so I think that one actually would be a lot of fun to build out. All right. Kind of like the like one level up from those uh, semi real time games. I forget what one of them was called, but like you end up interacting, sending messages back and forth with somebody on, on a planet, right? And so you send a message and it takes a while to get there and for them to go and do something and then, and then uh, see what their response is. So. I think the next piece of this here in order to get Game Master running, we're going to end up looking back at at this up here. Is basically subdividing Game Master per zone. It's going to be really important. So that might be the next stage of this. Yeah, if you haven't seen those games, they they are <laughs> they're really cool. I really, I'm, I'm being really vague on the game idea because I don't think it'd actually be very hard for somebody to build out. And I think it could actually be rather popular. But it's not gonna require as much rust, so. <laughs> This piece here, though. Game Master per zone. So what do we have currently? We're going to the whiteboard. Oh, that's right. And we were going to work on uh, emoticons. Not yet, though. Okay. So what do we have? We have connections. Uh, right now we have users connecting. So we have lots of users connecting. Th these are all the client connections. I got tired of drawing circles. And they all connect... Right, they, they connect to the game server. It has some sort of interface. You have like the internet here. This is the internet. These are the clients. Um, and here you have the game server, like the little wall here. Okay. And at this point you have um, the multiplexer and packeteer. Okay. Now in this case, you end up having multiples of these many of these. In fact, you'll have one of these for auth, 
one of them for character selection and then one of them for basically the game stuff so that that color is too close to the other one maybe no that one's close to the other other one should have chosen better colors all right and apologies uh, let's see now my colorblind kid couldn't see those apart yeah the, these colors are awful anyhow um So we have these basically the three different sections, right? You have the auth, character selection, and the game stuff. Now, for the packets here, for sending out data, we're going to have stay with three. Okay. The auth system, it's going to have one. Character selection, it's going to have one. And for all, for every single outgoing connection in the game system, it's all going to be bundled up into in, into one. At least that's how I perceive it right now. Packeteer is going to be getting cloned. And where's my eyedropper tool? The same color. Okay, it's that one. Now what this means is that as we end up having this, we just duplicate the one over and over and over and over and over again. So if we have lots of islands, we're going to duplicate this. And you're basically going to have one of these per island. Okay. Now, on the multiplexer side of things, let's see, is this, what color is that? Multiplexer, we're going to have basically the same sort of thing. We're, we're going to have the auth system, and then, oh, okay. Character selection, and then, the game now each one of these game pieces there at the bottom is going to be like its own little individual pair of things oh that's that's horrible the backing is oh that's right backing's the wrong color so i'm going to separate this out and say okay we have those two for the game master now for each individual island let's pretend that we have an island in the game because the game is made up of islands what is inside of an island? We'll have many, many, many different islands. Okay, now in this case, we'll basically have a multiplexer again, and then we'll also have a packeteer for each one of those, right? Now the multiplexer and the packeteer are subtly different. The packeteers can end up being cloned so that we can say, hey, send this packet out to this group of connections. Let's say you're part of like a chat or something and you want to send it to your chat group. Now, you might be in different islands and so we need this packeteer to be cloned across islands, which means that they will be the exact same packeteers across islands. But the multiplexers on this, the back pressure for incoming data is going to be different for each island. So in this case, you might have multiplexer here in that color, and it'll be a different multiplexer here, and then uh, yet another different one on the final island. So those will be different multiplexers, whereas the packeteers will be the same. So that's going to need to be set up. And I was thinking of calling these, these sections here zones, right? which are basically islands. And then the game master would then be inside of a zone. And the zone would consist of a multiplexer, a packeteer cloned, I've got one of those little drawing pads, but I never use it. I bought it like, I don't know, 15 years ago, and it still works. <laughs> and then it's going to also need a game master. Wow, that's terrible drawings but the game master itself has an ECS E C S all right and what else does it have okay so then each one of these as they get spun up we'll have to figure out okay which zone do you go into 
And when you exit and leave zones, when you exit and leave, yeah, or join. When you exit or join zones, we need to load your data and serialize it out. So they'll, they'll also be kind of like little checkpoints. This also means that we'll need some sort of ephemeral storage for mobs, because mobs should also be able to go between between zones. And so the zones will need some sort of canonical way of being able to transfer data from other zones. And maybe that's just going to be some memory-based, you know, uh, data store. It could be something like Redis or whatever, or it could be... Hmm. Yeah, even something else. All right. So this is going to be the next part. Right now, basically everything on the right, all the zones, are basically controlled by one game master. And they're all behind one multiplexer, one packet here, essentially. And that has to change. So that's what's coming up. I'm going to do some more thinking on it, as I've been streaming too long now. Um, so we're going to get raiding. And I'm going to do some thinking on this as well. Redis and Sled different? I've never heard of Sled. I mean, quite frankly, I might just end up using uh, Postgres for it. Right? Just say, oh, we have a memory data, bit, data store. Here's your table. This one is memory backed. Right? And I would be fine with that if it was just memory based. It just needs to be you know, something that, that can be used in multiple places. Is SLED a Rust thing? What is SLED? Modern Embedded Database. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Well, I want it to be someplace that that isn't on the same machine. The reason for this is because some of these items might end up being on different machines later. I can actually see some of those zones being on different machines. So eventually, eventually that'll happen. Yeah. And once that happens, this section here will actually change again. And when this, this changes, we will have connection servers. We'll be able to say, hey, connection server, you need to redirect this person to that machine over there or something like that. But we're not there yet. Either that. Yeah. Or we'll split it off the other way, kind of on the back end of it. I'll have to see what works. All right. Oh yeah, probably not sled. This is really all I need to do is be able to toss some subtle inf some state that a mob has. This could be like some boss or whatever, something whose tether extends beyond the, the individual island. Alright. I want to check something. Come back here for a moment. I'll take it. I'm going to take a peek at Twitch real quick. I got to get going. So we're looking for a raider. Or a raidy.
Yeah, my list is actually outdated. Okay. That's why. Oh, Brooke is online. Oh, we'll rave Brooke. What's Brooke working on today? Looks like... Oh, implementing a VEC. Interesting. Yeah, we'll go in that direction. Brooke raids us from time to time. And it looks like... Um, looks like Rust. So. Here we go, y'all. Look forward to seeing you again, and thanks for hanging out. So until next time, bye-bye.